called the uh, Black History Bible, I believe that's what it's called. And this came together over the past uh, six months or so. I was brought on late to help with the website, some technical stuff. Anyway, so this is going to be shown tonight, I thought, at 8.30. And um, I still think it's waiting, so we'll see. But at the interim, what we're going to do is I have a list of all of the people who are in the film over here. I'm going to share the screen, and I'm going to show you as they come up and tell you a little bit about these people and just uh, comment on what's actually um, the movie's about and that sort of thing. So when I get my technical stuff put together, I will get back to you and we will actually get this thing started. Let's see what's going on. Anyway. I can't see the screen now. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, the film has started. So if you're watching the film, I won't really comment while the film's going on. When the commercial breaks, we will actually uh, talk about what's going on. But the first person that's speaking now is a person by the name of Latrice James. This is her right here. So the funny thing about this is when this movie first was released to me, the word she used was actually unbleeped, but they actually bleeped it out because they want to show it in more places, but I thought it was very powerful. The introduction was so good. I have an interview with her coming up soon, hopefully uh, this week. I've interviewed six of the people so far in the film, and they're on uh, the Facebook page as well as my Rumble page. You can go check it out. I'll leave links in the uh, description below, or just go to the Facebook page and see it for yourself. So in the comments below, if you want to just add some comments here, everybody, just want to chime in. And if you've seen the movie, uh, yeah, let me know. Or if you plan to see the movie, it's actually airing right now on, on OAN. Uh, just let me know what your thoughts are, because uh, this is a grassroots project. And I hung out with Frank, who is the director. Uh, we hung out for about a weekend. And then we actually worked about three weeks prior to that, getting the website together and the payment stuff together for the uh, film, which you can actually watch for donation if you go to the website, systemic deception, I'm sorry, systematicdeceptionmovie.com. I keep getting systemic mixed up because I'm saying systemic racism all the time, but it's actually a systematic deception. Black Lives Matter stands for burning, looting, 
and murder. Well, they raised nine million dollars last year. Where did that money go? Because they had more, they had almost half their chapters across the country. Their own chapters signed onto a letter. One of the most high-profile one, Hawk Newsom, who is Black Lives Matter in New York, signed onto a letter saying that they have not seen any of those funds. They were loaded on buses and taken to cities to stir the pot of hatred between blacks and whites. There's only one reason people do that. It's because that division brings power to those who are That's Dr. Lisa Babbage. She's the actually the woman who actually wrote the book, just uh, like The Black History the Bible. Have ever done and she's the one that actually got this thing started. And exploited pain in the black community. They took a tragedy like George Floyd's murder and they blew it up to raise money. Every dollar that was given to BLM went to Democrat candidates. They're burning down black businesses. When is Black Lives Matter stood up for uh, David Dorn? He's uh, the man head of the uh, Frederick Douglass police officer, a retired police Foundation. officer who was killed in the street senselessly. No one said it said anything. No one said the name of Sequoia Turner. No one said the name of Legend House of Talia Farrah. The little kids who were killed in the midst of all this violence in the first cities. Little children. Stand for the lives of the unborn. Stand for the lives of these children who were killed senselessly in the inner city. I have yet to see them go to the inner cities of Chicago, South South Chicago, Detroit, Dallas, Atlanta, any of these Memphis, and talk about the black on black crime. And what about the conservatives that are black, like myself? Is it only the black lives that they choose? I'll still have an interview with this gentleman as well. It didn't matter? go through, when so hopefully we'll get it rescheduled. When have they picked up the trash that is down in the in the uh, in the inner city? When have they went and mentored some of the the youth and young adult black girls and boys? When have they done that? When have we seen pictures of that? When have we seen the pictures of them going in and, and checking on the elderly black community? Black lives do matter. They they do. But saying that Black Lives Matter means that we want to take the initiative to show something that is different. They had on the website their goal was to help restore the two parent home. Okay, they didn't they didn't believe in the mom sure and structure. They removed that part because we called them out nonstop on it. Now it's gone. But don't be mistaken. They still believe in that. They hear the story of the family. You can paint a Black Lives Matter view on the streets of Baltimore, the streets of Orlando, the streets of, of Utah. You can do all of those things, but does that actually help to change the black communities? No. Never this guy here, uh, his, he, I interviewed this gentleman here. His if name is William Montague. He's running for uh, Florida Congress, do. for U.S. Congress Why? in Florida. And because I have his interview on the uh, Facebook page as well. He's a really, really fascinating gentleman. He sponsored a uh, and viewing party last night in Orlando, Florida. Black people generally are not going to challenge it because they don't want to be called an Uncle Tom or Stella or words. Racism in America? Yes, there's this racism here is a, everywhere. His name is if Michael. You put two human beings right. space, there's going to be conflict. Right? Russell. The question is how do we deal with that conflict? Do we be, become Cain and Abel to kill each other? Or do we resolve our differences and compromise and live together? So, to say there's no bigotry or hatred or racism in America would be untrue. But to say that it's systemic and that black people don't have a chance is also true. The thing that I see most hampering black Americans is our culture. And so, what I say to uh, liberals who think they're helping, but actually making the situation worse, and to black Americans, if black men do not respect black women, who the hell should, and who the hell else would? If black men do not stick around to help raise their children, to provide for them, to show them right from wrong, and most important of all, to show them unconditional love, who else will and who else should? And so what the progressive social class has done is just pound of white people. You're bad, you're bad. You look at schools and they're teaching our young people, you're bad, you're bad. Go over to the black people and say, I'm sorry. I work for Black Lives Matter. I'm sorry that I scared you. People have had to make it like they're apologizing for their whiteness. And could you just please apologize for, you know, for your white privilege? What was more disheartening to me is that uh, those who are within the black community are allowing for that to take place. 
because that would be the same thing for us apologizing for our blackness. When we're telling our children, uh, you're black, so you have to do this, or you're black, so uh, you know, white people are going to do this. Uh, that's to you. Keisha King. That also revealed to me that when you speak those things over your children, her as well. a couple times actually on my channel, actually three times she's up on my channel, and uh, she's really doing a lot of stuff with CRT and parents. She's out down in Florida really doing a really good job there. She was on Fox and Friends this morning. She's doing a weekly show on Fox and Friends. Uh, she's a really uh, awesome person. So. You're reneging in what I have told you. Malcolm X. I don't agree with everything that Malcolm X said, but he said 50 years ago that white yeah, people Michael. are not there. He's on this a lot. He has a lot of good problems. things to say. We have to solve our own problems just like every other uh, group has, whether it's by race or religion. You have to solve your own problems. I remember years ago when all the Democrat candidates used to come down here to Atlanta and they would meet with uh, Mrs. King, the widow the Dr. King, and they would get up and they'd drop the evenings off of their words and they'd go to Ebenezer Baptist Church and they'd give a rousing speech about how downtrodden it was for black people in America. And then they would get up off stage and rock off beat, singing, uh, if they even knew the words, uh, we shall overcome. We will overcome someday. Then they were gone. You never saw them again for four more years. Right. Now, since she's gone, they go to Al Sharpton. Whereas the Reverend Al Sharpton led a protest in the Crown Heights neighborhood and marched next to a protester with a sign that read, The white man is the devil. Did you march next to a sign that said? I have no recollection of that. I marched in uh, many things where there were signs that I did or did not agree with. And this is probably sort of harsh to say. I view Al Sharpton as a poverty pimp, along with Jesse Jackson, Maxine Waters, Stacey Abrams, and the leaders of Black Lives Matter, because they pimp out black people for their own political and personal gain. You have a shooting in the black community, and if somebody dies, Al Sharpton will be there. You know, he will be there. He that guy's cool. He's a uh, he's, 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 he's I believe he's the Blexit. Uh, over the backs of black, you know, head, and everything else. I mean, you turn on black radio, it's hard to even to, to, to listen to black radio because then the, 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 the host comes on and he has to, he or she has to insert their political beliefs. You know, they have to insert. Oh yeah, you know, uh, Trump. He was a racist person. You need to vote for Biden. You need to support Biden. Ignore all the things that President Biden said. You know that was racist in itself. It's just you can't go anywhere in Black America anymore because now the entire culture is built in the image of Al Sharpton. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay to say disparaging things against white people. Our former president, Barack Obama, said it you know, about uh, old white men are a problem. Except when it comes time for him to fly around on their airplanes and, and ride around on their yachts or be their next door neighbors or endorse them for president like Joe Biden, then old white men are okay. If it's wrong to say those things about a black person or an Asian person, it's wrong to say those things about a white person. It's a big discrimination against black within the black race itself. Hey, nobody wants to talk about that. I'm so sorry if there's a narrative out there that people feel like only white people can be racist. There's people I've heard in the black community who said some of the most racist, vile things that if a white person did that to them, they would be up in arms and they'll be everywhere about it. And we're telling black people, we're telling white people they don't belong in this area or they don't understand us because this is a black thing or this and that. What if a white person says to a black person, you wouldn't get this is a white thing. <laughs> imagine, imagine the uproar in the black community. Imagine how upset. You know, we're walking around black power. Okay, well, a white person comes over and says white power. Imagine the uproar. Terrorism for white supremacy is the most lethal threat. The homeless. <laughs> I walk outside every day in fear of white supremacy right here in the middle of the hood. Okay, yeah, all right. I've never seen no white supremacy in my life. Never, and they can't point to one. But you know, I wish somebody would introduce me to a white supremacist. I would like to talk to them and take pictures with them because I've never seen one in my life. 
It never ceases to amaze me how expert the Democrat community is at race baiting by throwing out inflammatory terms such as white supremacy. And that is our greatest problem without really planning to have a genuine solution. We get the emotions of the people stirred up, but we do not allow the solutions to the problem. I don't think that it's true that white supremacy is our greatest problem in the US. Uh, one, because of, uh, take it myself, I've been able to achieve so Kapu, much in this country well. my family. A couple times. Uh, as well it's as awesome. That, uh, he's a, America is compared to... This brother here, he's got it together. My parents left. America is the one with the most opportunity. And if Joe Biden, you know, wants to go with that narrative, well, look at him. He is a white man <laughs> in America, a straight, straight white male, and he's running the nation where white supremacy is, according to him, rampant. So what does that say about him? He doesn't really care about racism or white supremacy or any of these things. He he will use these, you know, moments to um, symbolically care about black folks, um, like the kneeling on the floor and all those types of things that the that the liberals do. It is a symbol, but it's not actual policy that will help black people. I am more likely to get shot by someone who is my skin color than a white person walking outside. That's just a fact in black America. You know, when you ignore the fact to push an emotional agenda, emotional narrative, that's a person who seeks to divide us. I'm looking at athletes like LeBron James. I'm looking at people like Beyonce and Jay-Z. I'm looking at all these celebrities who have gotten rich in this country selling this narrative that we are a racist nation, always, always a bank. You have Oprah sitting there, and, and, and let's not forget, you know, I was young. But I still know enough about Oprah to know that I'm pretty sure a lot of white women also came to their success as well. Now spit in the line that this is a racist nation. I'm like, who built you, Oprah? We have a black vice president. Not quite sure what she's doing, but she, she's elected, right? The United States has recognized the voyage of the European explorers who first landed on the shores of the Americas. But that is not the whole story. That has never been the whole story. Those explorers ushered in a wave of devastation for tribal nations, perpetrating violence, stealing land, Come on here, and spreading man, disease. The Democrats are great at projection, and Joe Biden is one of the biggest racists that, that's been in our Congress for 50 years, and now he sits in the White House. You know, he called um, our cities concrete jungles. He didn't want his his um, grandchildren, his children, going to school in a racist jungle. That's the racism. He's got Joe a Jerome Bell. He's a... There is no one who has lived through the Trump 50s, dudes well. I need to get hold of him. And, 70s and have been able to make it to where we are right now. And can say with a straight face, that America is a racist nation that is patronizing. And it also spits in the face of Rosa Parks and Dr. Martin Luther King. It also spits in the face of Malcolm X. Because if BLM, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, hands up, don't shoot. If they're right, then Dr. King, Rosa Parks, Matthew Evers, and even Malcolm X, they're wrong. My grandparents had a cross burned on their property. We were slaves in the past. We're free now. What we're seeing, and Joe Biden is perpetuating this, even though it's not Joe. Joe's just reading the script, in my opinion. What we're seeing is a theft of power from those who actually were civil rights warriors. This is a man who eulogizes a white supremacist. Then it's easy for you to see through the facade that is Joe Biden. I, um, for a lot of us, he was a friend. He was a uh, Robert God. Byrd, Senator Robert Byrd from when, West Virginia, when you're about, a uh, Grant uh, Siegel in the, uh, the Ku Klux Klan. Right? 
and Joe Biden words that Biden eulogized and called him a mentor and a friend. I guess he would know a lot about it because he did, after all, write the 1994 crime bill that helped to incarcerate a lot of black people. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The cool thing about this particular movie is that it's up to date. Fight. He's got Shoot clips in there from as early as wife, maybe four months ago, sons. maybe even earlier than that. So, so he really ask. kept this thing current. Well, it's going to go forward in they the future and be rel relative because the all these Why issues is have been around forever, but some of them are emerging, like the CRT and the 1619 Project, all that stuff, as they address it later. Uh, the fact that he's like black people best friends right about now. He's our savior. No, I'm not buying that. You're the same Joe from 1994 that wrote that crab deal. I can imagine what MLK and some people are doing right now. They fought to be able to get us to a point where we're at today. We can go apply for the same job that anybody else can apply for. We can sit here in our, in our, in our suit and tie and we can have interviews, we can be on TV, we have black anchors, black basketball players, black celebrities, but yet we're still saying we're victims. No, we are not. We're not we, victims. If we are a victim, it's because we choose to be. We are choosing that life. No one, not Democrats, not Republicans, no one will change our life. No one policy will change our life. We have to change our lives. So Democrats definitely push victimhood uh, to make sure that the black community especially is more dependent on the government. Uh, running in Congressional District 7 in Baltimore City, uh, the first thing people would say to me is, number one, I've never been a Republican before, so thank you for coming to our neighborhood and provide options. But number two, we hear that Republicans are going to take away our disability. We hear Republicans are going to try to take away our welfare, our food stamps, everything. And I'm like, where does this even come from? And this is the thing that Democrats tell individuals. And so when you have four generations that have been on government-assisted programs, of course, they're going to be afraid to leave that government assistance because they don't know what the unknown is. And in terms of uh, victimhood, uh, let's be honest, life is not fair. Uh, but one thing, you have to always count your blessings and your advantages. And one thing is we've all won the lottery by being born or living in the United States Amen of America. That. So we're already privileged in that aspect. But we always take that for granted. I'm going to tell you how we were raised. I was born in 63. I'm the last of the baby boomers. We were taught as black Americans, we have always had to work harder than anybody else. So it's in our DNA. We know we have to work hard. And what's holding us down right now is the media. You see, the Democratic Party and the media, those are the two threats not to just black America, but to the entire world and to the democracy of this Republic of the United States of America. I'm running for mayor of Miami. No people have been heard two days ago. This is a my original lead. She ran for mayor of Miami. I never did bring the race card. She was the one, if you remember the debates that the nodding woman silhouetted behind, I think it was a Fox debate. She was the woman that was nodding her head. They called her the nodding woman. This is the, this is the person. She's also a lawyer, immigration lawyer in Florida. If that's the case, so that means that my husband is that oppressor and I am the victim. Our interview went for over 25 minutes. You can check that out. Sometimes life is happening for you. And a lot of times, what the rules do is they try to force this loop, this victim mindset onto people, especially on the black people, I can say. It's kind of part of dividing us into our little boxes, but part of keeping you into that box is keeping you in a mindset of victimhood. And where it comes from is whatever, again, that racist car that is pulled. This is racist. This is where black people, there's an injustice, and we can't get a job. We don't get equal pay. We don't Here get that. just joining us is a Willie Montague. He's the, running you know, for Congress. The racism that's out there in America, but, you know, they call uh, Obama the, the first black president, overwhelming number of people that voted for him. Where was the racism then? We have got to get out of this concept that victim, that victimology, that victim mentality is going to destroy our country is going to destroy our communities. Well, I personally think the Democratic Party is running out of ideas. Quite literally. It used to be, oh, it's the blacks. Now it's the Asians. Now, now it's the whites. Hate the whites. And at some point, they're going to run out of things, which is probably why they're creating genders. Right now, our community is being taught to blame everyone else for our problems. No way that we're the issue. 
Forget the fact that we're hunting each other down in the streets. Forget the fact that we're killing our unborn. Forget the fact that we are not telling our black young men and women that they can be anything they want to be. Blame America. Blame the white man. Blame everybody else. When I was coming up, as a young child, my mother and them were waiting in line for hours for food. When my mom uh, had at, at least five kids at that time, my mom and my father would work from sun up to sundown. My mother would go and iron clothes for people. And those winter days comes in and it'd be so cold. And you got children to feed. We didn't have any gas at that time. We had things that we growed on the farm. So see, back then, we didn't blame a white person for what we went through with. Everybody hate. What did the hate come from? It's come from the individual. I can't hold you responsible for 400 years of slavery. I can't do that. One thing I have discovered in my years of living, and I've lived for seven decades, is that the Democrat Party manipulates the African American community. They're very, very good at that. The Democrats uh, have always lied. I love C.L. Bryant. This guy's awesome. Black people. To me, he's an OG from Black conservatism. Black people became a part of their party. The, the Republican Party was actually the first home of the black vote uh, because Lincoln freed the slaves and the slaves voted uh, Republican. It was the Republican Party that had the first black members of Congress. It was the Republican Party that pushed through not only the civil rights legislation of the 60s, but also the 50s. Now, the distortion came right after the death of JFK. Lyndon Johnson becomes president of the United States and uh, it was necessary to keep that type of momentum that just loved JFK, just loved John Kennedy, going for LBJ, who was not known to be a friend of black people coming out of Texas. But I've got to discriminate. We have a bunch of information on our channel. Um, if you go to our playlist, you'll see why the parties never switched. A couple of videos out there, we cover this in detail. Why the parties never switched, including the Southern strategy involving why the black people actually switched out of the Democratic Party. They actually started back on the FDR, but it really kicked in full gear right around the Civil Rights Movement, around the death of, um, not the death, but the incarceration of King. Um, and uh, well, that we've been receiving there. government paychecks for the last 50 years, and we're at the bottom of the economic ladder. How is one more government paycheck going to fix that? What the hell I need reparations for? I was never slave. My mom and dad were never slaves. My grandparents were never slaves. But I'll tell you this, if we continue to live He's running for governor of Texas. Colleges, this is Colonel Allen West. Community. They will never abandon. He actually uh, was a congressman uh, you've heard it uh, said a few years often. back. I'm from the government and I'm here. He's one of the governor of, of heard Texas. That. that epitomizes the Democrat Party. They told the poor whites, they told poor blacks that, hey, we're from the government and we're here to help you out of your despair. And you have this mythology in, in the black community that there's going to be this political messiah that's going to come down from Washington and he's going to solve all the problems in three easy steps. So whether it's affirmative action or welfare or Obama phones, they launched what was called a war on poverty. And the, the war on poverty actually turned into a war on the family because what happened was the government became daddy and the government then, because they were daddy, they didn't want another daddy in the house. The lie was is that it's okay. You will take care of them. And uh, if you have some more, we'll give you more money. This is something that has been a deception given to America over the course of time, over the period of time, that is now we're seeing the fruits of it. We have planted those seeds 50 years ago, and the children of those seeds are now giving grandchildren to those seeds, and this is the amazing thing about it. They're believing the same lie. They're believing that more money 
solve social ills. We were not raised to be afraid of white people or to resent white people or to see ourselves as victims. Um, I grew up the first eight or nine years of my life in a segregated neighborhood. Um, there lived my great grandmother, my grandparents, my uh, first cousins. Everybody had a job. Uh, we were poor, but we didn't know it. Uh, there was a lot of pride in the neighborhood, a lot of pride in the school. Uh, there was no crime. A uh, family stayed together. Um, was, I can never remember there being trash or uh, paper in the street. And you could leave your, your home a lot. And my dad would leave the key in the car. And this was an all black neighborhood. A couple of years ago, I took my son back there. And it was very emotional for me because it had been destroyed. It was still full of black people, but they were no longer working. They were on welfare. All, all the houses were sectioning. Um, my, my son didn't understand why I, was so, why I was so upset. And we left. And I explained to my son, this is what happens when you lose your dignity and your self-respect and your self-reliance. Uh, when you don't take responsibility for yourself. Uh, my grandmother used to always tell me, and I saw it in that neighborhood, the value of freedom is nothing. When you give people stuff, they do not value it. And so the people that originally lived there that worked so hard and were so proud of those homes, they worked for that. But the people who are living there now were just given that, and they placed no value in it. And so if they tear it up and destroy it, who cares? The only community that has received... Good point. Give it away. No one's going to care about it. But that told me that. ...is the African-American community. In other words, we'll give you free abortions. We will give you uh, opportunities for welfare as long as you push the man out of the house and we'll give the lady a check. They destroy and minimize our community. So there have been efforts throughout the history of America to make restitutions to various parts of the American family. But the African American community has generally received programs that suppress and minimize our growth, our population growth. So that's something very unfair that needs to be dealt with, in my opinion. And now here we go again, the Democrats pandering and wanting to be able to bring, you know, somehow some magical number of dollars to those that were, you know, in, enslaved and to, you know, our family. What, what, where's that money going to come from? Again, it's another tactic. And if you notice with the stimulus check, all this was was getting people high. Most of the people, especially the black people that got the stimulus check, where did you see them at? I've seen them on vacations and, and getting $3,000 uh, 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 tires and all kinds of things. That didn't go back to help really stimulate the economy because all it was was for them to have a toy. Uh, some people went out there and got cars because you were able to put down a big lump sum of, of money and get a car, and now you can't make your car pay because you want everybody to see you in some car. It happens tax season. It happens yep. with the stimulus check. So we always see pawn we'll shops we'll take and uh, check to pay places and in the hood. what is that going to turn? Why? We would not want to see it actually do anything in our communities. The liberal government that we're seeing, they love money, and the love of money is the root of all evil. Right. This reparations is, is illogical. First of all, who's going to receive and who's going to pay? Every black person in America was not the descendant of slaves. We had black people who held slaves. We had American Native Americans who had slaves, who actually held slaves longer than whites did. So who's going to pay the reparations? Uh, are the white people who came to America after slavery going to pay? Uh, are mixed race people like myself going to pay? I mean, how many black Americans are pure black? So who's going to pay and who's going to receive it? Just as a basic question. The reason that I left the Democrat Party was because I did not agree with abortion. It's very obvious that abortion has devastated the black community. I've got any reliance on for this lady. Uh, Hopefully I can get that done as well. 12.8% of the American population. And they man the McGee. Being, let's say, 7.5% uh, of the American population. But yet they make up 43% of abortions in this country. You have to ask yourself, how is that number upside down like that? There has to be a design. Our population is 
dwindling and diminishing, and it's very sad. Um, you know, you never know what we could accomplish if we could get our numbers up and focus on nuclear families and really building our lives. The Democrat Party kind of refuses to allow black people to do that. And that's why black people have to take the initiative and lead and, and turn their back on those policies and that way of life. It's a horrible lifestyle. And I can attest to that myself. I've never been a Democrat, but I was surrounded by Democrats at certain points in my life, surrounded by liberals, leftists, and it, it brings you down. It really can destroy you. And I'm just so thankful to God that I just am able to get away from all that and just surround myself and raise my son. I have a nine-year-old, raise him to be a conservative. The Democrat Party is the party of abortion, and that's wrong uh, in my view. But particularly for people who call themselves Christians in the black church, that you will support a party that is 100% pro-abortion with no holds barred. The Democrat Party today is pushing abortion. They're hurting our children. You killed nearly and half so the black I population that Democrats have not since 1973 with abortions. And if you take that number and draw it out in terms of as, uh, kids who could have had kids, it's way more than black race. When you talk about abortion, and I don't it's like disgusting. to use that word because that's buying into the language of the left. I like this We're talking about murdering unborn babies. Murdering unborn and babies. There is perfect. one community that's been devastated by the murder of unborn babies. You are now seeing upwards close to 25 million black babies have been murdered in the womb. So, yes, the Democrats have used abortion. The Democrats have used race. And the diabolical duo of those two. I'm taking yeah, notes, by the way, so I'm going to talk about these talking points. Make you a chance. I thought there'd be commercials, community. but there's not. You're being black and you're being murdered. Not by the white man. You're black. And you're being murdered in numbers that are unproportional to any other abortion numbers in this country I'm by afraid. your black mother. Now, friends, I'm not wanting to sound uncompassionate when I say that. The most compassionate thing that I can possibly do is point out that we're murdering our future. One woman said to me in an interview I did with her, she was an elderly woman. She was about 75, and we're talking about 20 years ago. When she looked at the, uh, the abortion rate among black young women, she being an elderly black mother, she could not believe that a time had come where a black woman would kill her child, not after coming through slavery, not after our race has survived slavery. She couldn't believe that. So I'm not wanting to be, show, not show compassion, for those who do have abortions. But black people, that was not anything we did. But when it did happen, when, the, when, when Sally, your cousin, got pregnant. Yeah, this is a good point here. Listen to this. Family, the girl had a trouble in the family. We didn't kill the baby. You know what we did? All of a sudden, we sent her to Detroit to visit with Aunt Ethel or somebody. And then Sally would come back home after nearly a year. And guess what? Aunt Ethel had a new baby. It was just amazing. But we didn't kill the child. As a matter of fact, in New York City, not too long ago, there were more black people. Nothing gets me madder than uh, the uh, we even being born. killing babies. They are fighting to destroy black America through abortion. There were two Planned Parenthood establishments within walking distance of my high school. I went to Planned Parenthood with an unplanned pregnancy. The nurse asked, did I want to hear about my options? My options were to have an abortion on Tuesday or Thursday. We can't consistently continue to exterminate black people. It's like putting up a roach box, trying to collect the roaches, as if somehow blacks are the roaches. Uh, these roach boxes are these abortion clinics. And where are they placed? They're placed in the corners of the black community. Why are they placed in white communities? Why are they placed in Asian communities? Hey, why are all the abortion why clinics, why are they all in, in the hood? The What's up with that? In black they have not stopped their plan to exterminate blacks by flooding our neighborhoods with Planned Parenthood clinics, some the size of shopping malls. Planned Parenthood, America's largest abortion provider,
has admitted that their founder, Margaret Sanger, was a racist during her lifetime. Margaret Sanger was a racist and a eugenicist. She admittedly wanted to target the African American community for population control and reduction. And where do we get this organization called Planned Parenthood from, which the left does not like to talk about? Nope. Planned Parenthood was founded by a person that was a white supremacist or racist who spoke at Klan rallies. She started the 1939 Negro Project, where she, yeah. uh, she called it was called the Negro Black Project. Planned <laughs> Parenthood was called the Negro Project. Society. And this guy is Adrian Jones. He's a street preacher. He's a, uh, he, uh, he preaches uh, in the uh, urban areas in the street. I'd like to get an interview with this gentleman. It was a great privilege when I was told that I would receive this award. Uh, I admire. By the way, this film is uh, executive producers are Sam and Kevin Servo. Come in and, and use them against the, the rebellious type that would you know try to fight against her because she said she didn't want work to get out that she would exterminate the Negro population. And this is what the Democrat Party has been doing through Planned Parenthood. You know, I believe that abortion is an evil of our time, but I never blame women who had to make that choice or who have made that choice. Uh, every woman is a child of God, and even if you made that decision. There is forgiveness for all of us, for all of our sins. We have to remember that God is there for us. And so I want to encourage women to, to return to the Lord. In the black church, the topic of abortion will very seldom be discussed. It is uncomfortable. But when I was uh, in the pulpit, and I pastored three churches across the country from California to Florida. Uh, and uh, I have served on many church boards, and I have seen, I've noticed. It's going to come out to see how far, even even in this is behind the actual audio. Who cares how far it this is? is but top. if you can hear the that audio from the speaker, then you can know where I'm talking about in terms of the picture. That we talk about. Why? Our comments. As a pastor, I have sat with women who have experienced the trauma of aborting a child. I've sat with parents and um, women and their husbands or their boyfriends who have aborted their child. My grandfather, Martin Luther King Sr., was very aware of abortion. He convinced my mother in 1951 not to have a DNC and abort me. I was going to abort one of my children legally in the 1970s. I mentioned it to my grandfather. He said, you can't do that. They're lying. That's not a lump of flesh. That's my great grandchild. You can't do it. So my grandfather, Martin Luther King Sr., was rescuing babies from abortion throughout his whole ministry. That's rare for a preacher. But preachers really won't deal with abortion from the pulpit. They see more people on Sunday mornings and a lot of our politicians may see all week. And they don't want the competition. And they don't want to have to deal with that. So they write these laws where they do what? They give benefits to the churches to stay out of certain areas. Don't come in the political arena. I did a movie review of this. If you go to the website or go to my YouTube channel, links are here. I did a review of this movie and I talk about politicians are paying churches to silence them. When the churches should back up on the music of this film, which I think is amazing. Our true payment comes from God. The most famous preacher in our family, of course, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, we must learn to live together as brothers and all add as sisters or perish together as schools. And I was raised not to put my confidence in politics, but in God. One of my favorite passages in the Bible talks about the people crying out for a king and a ruler. And God gave them King Saul, but he said, you're not going to like it so much because you've got me. And Saul is not me. He said, okay, I'll, I'll give you a king. And then we had King David after that. And we had many kings throughout the Bible history. So God allows politics, and you can't really put God out of anything. However, you can try to run a government without God, and you'll find out that it turns into a disaster. I really believe that 
some of the most powerful books in the Bible. Romans 13, for instance, says, Are you afraid of the government? You should be. Obey the laws. And that's the God we God ordained laws, not just crazy laws for people. Then you'll live well. Some of the best examples we have of Bible heroes have either been kings or governors. You know, Daniel was a politician. Queen Esther was married to a politician. And Joseph, in the time of Egypt, became one of the most powerful politicians in his culture. God's hand on Daniel, on Queen Esther, on Joseph is evident that God is ever present, even in the political realm. So it's very appropriate to discuss politics, but to see it through a lens with God being in charge. Jesus called out the Pharisees. In fact, the Founding Fathers wanted us to be engaged in politics, and because it takes religion, spirituality, to make a republic work. Without that, you cannot have a republic. You go into a mob rule hell hall, which we're having right now. Which was the government under Caesar at that time in Israel. And when we look at how he did that, we understand that what he had to do was upset certain apple carts. He had to turn some things over. Thank you, Robin. I really appreciate that. People who had gotten entrenched Thank you. into a certain culture, into a certain mindset that had been placed upon them by that government of the Pharisees. The Sanhedrin Council is what they were called. What does that tell us? It tells us that there comes a time, especially you pastors and preachers and you Christians out there, you need to hear me. There comes a time. He's bringing it home now, baby. You must stand up on principles. It just seems that we are walking down a road where we're allowing liberal ideology to dictate what we do, and that's taking us far, farther and farther away from God. But this whole thought of having a vaccine passport or that, you know, the mask mandates, or you can't celebrate the 4th of July if you're not doing certain things, or if you don't get a vaccine, you know, I look at a lot of these things, and all I see is the spirit of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Everything is turning, not really for the good, it's turning to evil. And people love the name evil. They don't know that demons are working with them. In, in regards to religion and, and politics, the reason why people want to separate that is to, to win an argument. So to take away God from it, and so that they can have their views taken the place of what, where God had. As you see, uh, even within the Catholic Church, and within, like, being you know, the Democrats, they've infiltrated the Catholic Church's once pro-life stance to get people to be on their side. Even to the point of, you know, Joe Biden, who also claims to be a Catholic, he uses that as a push to move on. And uh, with politics, once they take that place of, you know, religion, they get to twist it in their own way. Whether it's right, even though it's right in the Bible, on a stance between, like, you know, marriage, uh, certain values of, like, you know, celibacy, I feel they say they don't talk about religion and politics is because they want to take God and the Bible out of it, and in doing so, that helps them win their worldly argument. This nation needs to know yeah, us that also. this country was created for a moral people, a people with a moral compass. But what's going away is that word decency. You don't you don't hear that anymore. That, that you, if anything goes in our nation. And so we've lost our moral compass. But this nation will not work for anyone else. As you see, it beginning to decay and, and, and become dilapidated. Because the moral structure of our nation is decaying and becoming dilapidated. And so go the people of that nation. You the music of this particular film, the score, is phenomenal. And he tastefully puts it in there at times when the film needs to be ramped up and make it powerful. He does that. It's amazing. The more we bring him back into this country, 
the more blessed we'll become. And our eyes will be open because the Bible said, blessed is the nation who God is the Lord and the people who he has chosen for his own inheritance. The Democrat Party, they were moving them, you know, they were moving them out of the school, you know, and uh, they're doing everything against the Bible. So they are, they are against God. Absolutely. I believe that what we see in the Democrat Party, those who are progressive and liberal all the way, uh, 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 Marxist, uh, uh, communist, is that they hate God. They hate God, they hate America, and they hate Americans. And what they want is to have power and control, and it's demonic. And that's why we have to be able to be restored to the faith. Now we're in a place where we must fight for our faith, and we can't let that. And when we get away from God, the Bible said, uh, for uh, the nation that forget God, that nation shall be turned over to, to hell, you know. So we don't need to be forgetting God, we need to be honoring God and lifting God up, especially right now, especially right now, because of everything that's going on, all the division. It's only a unity in Jesus Christ. God is love. And he, he loves us, he forgives us. When you, you, when you give your life to him, you repent. But he's also a just God. Where he, you know, um, the Bible said that the wages of the sin is death. You know, um, you don't want to pay, you know, if you don't give your life to over to God, you have to pay for those sins yourself. And that, that, that's in hell, you know. We can go back to in Genesis when God destroyed a whole city behind the behavior that's been promoted of the LGBTQ we destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. We're reminded throughout all of the scriptures not to follow what they did. And it's, it seems to me as if America is following the same path as Sodom and Gomorrah. And it takes those who, you know, who know God to remind those who don't know God to turn back to God. Well, and this is where uh, the, the rubber meets the road. When they sit in the congregation, what religion has turned into, what, what our Christianity in America has turned into, is a feel good session without the truth of, and the principles of Scripture being applied to the womb that is sitting there in that congregation. They're wounded. And they don't need to. Be, they don't need to necessarily uh, be told that everything's okay because everything's not okay. We're killing our children. This is what most pastors are afraid of. They're afraid of what happened to him. What happened to him? Well, it, it got him crucified. I believe that you totally misunderstand the mission of Christ. Without the crucifixion, Pastor, there is no resurrection. There is no salvation. There is no hope for man or mankind. This is part of sharing the suffering and the ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And through that, you can provide a resurrection. Uh, so recently I had a, I spoke at the Department of Education uh, hearing about critical race theory and uh, the governor Ron DeSantis uh, shared it and it went viral. CRT in its outlook today is a teaching that there is a hierarchy in society where white, male, heterosexual, able-bodied people are deemed the oppressor and anyone else outside of that uh, status is oppressed. That is a very simplistic way of looking at critical race theory, but that is ultimately the outworking of what this theory gives you when you when you start to apply these theories in real life ways. My son, when he graduated in 2012, he was a valedictorian of the science book. You have a video on CRT. Uh, you can check it out. 10 minute expose on that. But we're going to do another one right because it's so it's so important. We're going to do a breakdown, hopefully, a uh, collaboration with uh, another uh, pundit to put it out there. And you speakers. can even find out what your child's GPA is that they no longer rank students. When you hear people like Bill Gates say that uh, we should make black children show their work when they do math, I bet you his kids can show 
their work that they do. Black kids, I believe that they don't have the rights black kids. I believe that they're too stupid to compete with white kids. That's discrimination. What do I say to my nephew brother or sister brother? Yes, I have to tell you that it's a beautiful boy that you can Again, she ran for mayor of Miami. And half white. And she's an well, immigration lawyer in Florida. Um, I've been getting so much evil hate. Uh, from so many people, many of them black people, absolutely, Robin. Uh, unfortunately, absolutely. saying that I don't want um, critical race theory is just you know better than that history being taught. That is not what critical race theory is. I want, for the record, for the 50th million time, I want all American history taught good, bad, ugly. I want more of the successful stories, black Americans, our contributions to this amazing country told. We Woodrow Wilson to purposely all removed the all the That's positive role models series. and positive We're figures in black America when he was president like and I became a professor later. So he removed it all. He did a video on that as well, documenting that the wall builders. Part, which also goes back to why the left wants to do it, because they believe that's how they achieve political advantage and political gain, dominion, power, and control. It is not good for our children. We do not need teachers teaching our children that if you're a little white child, uh, you're responsible for the history of <laughs> the whole country, and you're an oppressor, and we don't need them teaching uh, everyone else that you are in a permanent state of oppression. What type of hope are we giving our children if we tell them that they are permanently oppressed or they are permanently an oppressor? That is a mindset that will create an out, a worldview that they will walk in. And I don't think that we are ready to see a society of these people, these little people that have grown up and are thinking that they are permanently oppressed or permanently an oppressor. But when you have the head of the teachers union, Randy Weingarten, stand up and say that the teachers unions are going to fight parents so that they can teach them critical race theory, what's game on? Stop indoctrinating our children. Stop teaching our children to hate the police. It's basically white shame. Are you aware of any time in American history when an attorney general has directed the FBI to begin to intervene in school board meetings? Please get back to just teaching our children math, science, factual history. Because now there's an organization that says that you don't own your children. You can't decide what your child is going to learn. We will. So this is the fight. You are training a generation of racism. Those very kids are going to grow up and hate the white kids. And not only that, some of them will start killing them or doing whatever. So it's going to cause a raised riot and a raised war. And that is what the Democrat Party wants. So they can bring something in uh, that's going to clamp down on every single person. So we do not need to feed into a critical race theory. It has no place in our schools. Not even a place in our home. But is that what you want to do in your home? Do it. You're free to do that in your home. But we don't need that in our institution at all. The United States uh, military is putting that into, into the military now while other countries are looking at us laughing and they can easily defeat us while we concentrate on the color of the scheme. The left is infiltrating our military. And you have senior military this is scary officers part here. like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Miller, talking about white rage. I want to understand white rage, and I'm white. And talking about how we need to have critical race theory and this Ibrahim Kendi, he's giving him a seat at the table. How can we have a cohesive fighting force Abraham Kennedy is a complete oath? idiot. When you take that oath, you take that oath to the rule of law, faith that binds us together as an American people, as a constitutional republic. It's not about black, white, Hispanic, Asian, or anything else. It's about this country. And when we allowed our senior leaders to accept an ideology, obviously because they want to continue to be in a position of leadership, and they forget the oath that they took to the Constitution, I'm very concerned about the direction of the senior uh, military leadership that we have because first and foremost they should have turned to someone and said you're not going to teach any of this ideological garbage in the United States military. That's what men and women do when they remember the oath that they took. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read, I've read Karl Marx. Not to Karl Marx, culture Marxism, not to progressive socialist leftism and liberalism, and certainly not to something that would undermine the cohesion the greatest fighting force in the world is ever
During the days of Babel, when they were building a tower, God divided the people according to culture and language, not skin color. Nobody's skin looks totally black without the blues and magentas in that skin. Nobody looks like a white piece of paper. So we are all colored people. So there is a critical race. It's the human race. People have been a Democrat, especially in the African-American community for years. I guess if you can trace that back to Martin Luther King, you know, John F. Kennedy, uh, siding with him, uh, letting him out of jail. Uh, you stick around at the end of the movie. I'll do it. About this, a 10 minute or so discussion on the points I got here, including why the party was actually never switched. And what he's mentioning here as well. I come from Detroit, Michigan, originally. We had the first black mayor, which was Coleman Young, and he was a Democrat. So I'm able to see what the long term effects are. And when we had Coleman Young, not only did they control the city, they controlled the city, they controlled the police, and they also controlled the drug business. And these are facts, so I know what I'm talking about. I mean, yes, I was very involved with the uh, Democratic Party. I would go to their meetings, you know, where I'm sitting there thinking, okay, this is 21, 2021, and we're holding this meeting. Damn, did we just have this meeting in 2018? Exactly, we talked all the time. We talked for years. In 2000, in 1985. And nothing has been done yet. And we're still holding the same meetings, still trying to complete the same projects. It's crazy because we are. We're sitting there, you know, they're, oh, Lord, can you come to the meeting? We want you to come to the meeting. Y'all come to the meeting. Y'all talking about the same shit you guys are talking about in 2021. She's hilarious. I love her. 20, and ain't a damn thing been done yet. So what the hell y'all want me to come and listen to the same shit over and over again? You know? Are those people that you are voting for every single year, are they racist? They're the ones that's keeping you on a Democrat plantation. And to me, that's racist. When I was a kid, we used to stand in line for government cheese and other handouts. I remember us being in the blistering sun in the summertime, waiting to eat, waiting for something to fill our swollen bellies. Not like in Africa, but American poverty. I remember thinking that all of us that were there, everyone in my community looked like me. We were all black Americans. As I grew up, I realized we had something else in common. We all lived in Democrat run cities. When we look at all the party violence across the country, we look at what's going on in these inner cities, they're being run by progressive mayors, right? In Baltimore City, we have a progressive state attorney who is soft on crime and criminals are running the streets. And I think that's first and Democrats are always soft on crime. It's ridiculous. I don't know why. Right? What is it with Democrats? Why is it they love criminals so much? Uh, you have a lot. One of the main ways it's like the more Democrat Party goes, the more they embrace debauchery. about what they really are about. So they claim that they are for minorities. They claim that they are for helping you know, black people in particular. However, the policies that they push today are still pervasively harming the black community and minority communities, for instance, abortion, uh, anti-biblical marriage ethics. It is very harmful to I love that phrase, anti-biblical ethics. Up, they're, they're believing that the, this party is for them when they are pushing things that are against their self and self-interest against the best interest and so i think that is a special kind of evil the uh democrats and the liberals together what they, they have done came together on one accord and they are pushing their twisted agenda off on the black community therefore destroying the black community and it's destroying our nation they think that the black community is very easy to be manipulated and so they go through the black community thinking that, well, we won't get any pushback no matter what we do because we're coming through the black community to get this uh, enacted. For example, the uh, fraud in the uh, election on past November the 3rd, if you notice, if you look at the cities mostly ran by black, this is where all the fraud was. Fulton County is where most of the fraud happened, and Fulton County is ran by most of the black people. But the white liberal is behind the scene. They have the blacks out front and use them. So that's what's destroying America. It's really embarrassing. Using, uh, <laughs> so embarrassing. It happened hundreds of years ago to make us think that we are oppressed when we're really not oppressed. And we are, uh, most of our community is falling for. You see the lack of educational freedom. You know, there's no reason 
the Democrats you would think that for black people they would support school choice. The well, school choice is not something they want to have because if you're not affording people in the black community in our inner cities a good quality education, then you're not enabling them to be a part of the quality of opportunity that this great country has. The main way that liberals and Democrats are harming our country is through our children, through the sexualization of children, teaching our kids very inappropriate things in schools, promoting sex changes in children before they're even reaching puberty. That not only hurts us currently, but it hurts the future. Jim Crow is a creature of the Democratic Party. Um, uh, the Ku Klux Klan is a creature of the Democratic Party. Uh, when you look at the, the, the court decisions, three-fifths of citizens, these were Democratic policies, a separate but equal Democratic policies. And so we talk about George Floyd and having the foot on the neck, but the Democratic Party has had their foot on the neck of black people for over 200 years. The damage that is being done by them is to distort the success that America has been in the eyes and mind of its youth. It's distorting the story of a nation that has come out of uh, its past, which did have its troubles, to a place that has become the greatest success story on the face of the planet, and the greatest story ever told in human history as far as the nation is concerned. They're poisoning the minds of our young people. And when you poison the mind of young people, then you begin to take away all of the achievements that the trials and troubles that our ancestors trudged through to get us to this place. If you don't believe and think as the left wants you to, as part of that culture of Marxism, as part of that racial divisiveness, and they're gonna bring you a white supremacist. You know what is so absolutely funny is when someone came out and said that Candace Owens was a black white supremacist. Uh, when someone in the LA Times wrote an opinion piece that said, Larry Elder is the black face of white supremacy. So everything has to come back to this you know, boogeyman that they're trying to create to, to keep us divided based upon race. It's time for us to walk away from the lies, from the controlling spirit, and from every uh, method and everything that they have formed against us. We have two parties, if not just for one reason at all, for once in your life, say, I'm going to vote Republican or some other party just to see what it better our life. Because the last six or seven years, both Democrats, we've been guaranteeing our vote for them, and we still struggle, and we still complain about everything. You know, it's all about the waking up process. Of course, it's a painful one. You know, sometimes you lose family members. You know, I've seen on social media some people not speaking to their family because, you know, the, um, the family is democratic and that particular individual decides to become a conservative. But, you know, it's all about waking up. Back in the day, the Republican Party was the party of the black people. You know, that's we all had conservative views. The Republican Party was really constructed by Frederick Douglass, one of the most prominent black men that paid for his own freedom in this country. And everybody has to realize that. You know, if you know the history, you know the strength of the black American. Many years ago. Woodrow Wilson 30, removed 30, Frederick Douglass from the Texas years ago, I was president of the NAACP in Garland, Texas. And of course, uh, at the time that I left the NAACP, I was a Democrat. But I left the Democrat Party, being a Democrat at the time myself, because I received a directive from then director of the national organization, Dr. Benjamin Hooks, God rest his soul. And the directive uh, asked me to go and speak at a pro-choice rally. Now, this to me, could not happen because of my core values. I was the minister of evangelism at the church I was serving at that time. And so I sent back, we didn't have the cell phones and all that type of thing, but I, I mimeographed back uh, to him. Mimeographed. Uh, these words, uh, sir, with due respect, I cannot. 
participate in a pro-choice rally. Once that particular light came on, it then caused me to question, how is it possible that I continue to vote then for the party that pushes this type of idea? Well, when we're talking about Joe Biden, see, that's, again, going back to the history, you talk about a man that's been in politics since 1960. I was born in 63. Most of us know that he's probably one of the biggest racists around. Listen to the things that come out of his mouth. Listen to the words that he say. You know, when he's when he, uh, he say, oh, if you don't vote for me, then, you know, you're not black enough. They're going to put y'all back in chains. You know? How you going to tell me as a black person, how as an independent thinker, as a black woman, how are you going to tell me who I should vote for? How are you going to tell me how I should think? And then you're going to go so far as to insinuate that we are not even capable of being business owners because we don't have an ID, because we don't have a lawyer, because he, we don't have an accountant. Young black entrepreneurs are just as capable of succeeding, given the chance as Biden is so. I mean, but they don't have lawyers. They don't have they degrading don't to black people. Accounts. Black people still get them as a pass. A business owner, I've been in business over thirty years. As a business owner, of course I have a lawyer. Of course I have an accountant. But you know, you can find those people in the phone books every day. You know, you can find them on the internet any day of the week. So how are you going to say that we don't have access to them? So that just shows right there. It shows your mentality. It shows what you think about people. And it's very demeaning. It's very demeaning for you to talk about black people that way. It's very demeaning for you to say those words out of your mouth. And it's very judgmental. So to me, that speaks values about what you really feel about black people and what you really feel about black America. All the blacks that I know drive, if they don't, they, uh, you know, take, you know, uh, public from you, but that's because that's their choice. So they're able to go get their driver license and take a driver's test, which every state requires. Why can they not be uh, capable enough to get a voter ID? I don't know a black person that doesn't have an ID. You know, I think that's so insane. I think it's insulting. I think it's actually racist in itself to say that black people can't obtain an ID. They don't want responsibility because they know what? They, they, they've been taken and uh, and basically just why they're lying in the system, messing with the system, messing with the uh, voter integrity. And the Democrats are afraid of the term accountability because it means that they can't sneak and lie. And the question should not be what the Democrats are doing to us. The question should be, why are they pushing such a hard agenda? And I'm going to give you the answer. Because they know if they mentally control Black America, they are in control of the voting systems, they are in control of the people's minds. Because one thing people do know about us, we ain't going nowhere because we didn't come from Africa. Our ancestors were right here in the country we built. Now, now, what does that mean? Everybody know we're we'll going to down before we leave, and this is a fact. But by making this a civil rights issue, they know that black people are going to fight that battle for them. But the real target this is, is the key the point in the movie here. For legal immigrants to vote. Legal immigrants. Um, but again, if you push a racist narrative behind it, black people will be your warriors, they'll be your fighters on the front line, and they'll be the ones pushing it for you while you pull the string. So, in many ways, I think the Democrats are like, they're like that person who seeks division, who thrives on chaos. And I think they're willing to all of America right now. So we have to be the change that we want to see. I think the only way to be the change is people in the community step up and say, I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm officially announcing my 2022 candidacy for the United States House of Representatives and the District of Virginia. We want to put our country on. The absence of action really is a causation of problems. For example, uh, I turn the war on in my tub, and it, it's plugged up, and it rises and rises. And someone looks at it and says, oh, gosh, I didn't do anything with that. I mean, I didn't start that. I didn't start from the walkway. The water rises and rises, gets all over the floor, and finally gets in their bedroom, right? And they say, well, um, I, I didn't do anything 
you know, I mean, it's not my fault, but it is your fault. Because you could have turned me away. And I believe God puts us all through tests. I believe that. And I think he's testing this country as well. What side are you standing on? Who are you standing with? Are you with me or are you not with me? So the Christians have to stand up because it's not just about us. It's about them standing up, standing up for God and speaking for God as well. I'm a believer. As long as we stand up and fight, somebody fought for me and we have to fight for these generations to come. And we want to know why the black community is not coming to the Republican Party is because we have not went to the black community. Unity does not look like all one party. It looks like multiple people coming together because they're tired of the divide that started. That's where I'm trying to get uh, our county, our community, our neighbors, our neighborhoods, our country to. You remember the days of when uh, the Macy's stores, your Sears stores used to have the mannequin in the window? And the mannequin was always dressed in something that would entice you to go into the window and look for that thing, or they have several mannequins. Well, in the Republican window, okay, there's only the one mannequin, and that mannequin is white. When we know for sure that there are black Republicans in the store. But you'll never know that by looking at the mannequin. It's extremely important to have Republicans, regardless of their race, run for office so we can change the mannequin in the front of the window. So we will attract more people coming into our store. I, I think on the Democratic side, they do this very, very well. They put black mannequins in the window. They put Asian Hispanic mannequins in the window to attract gay mannequins in, in, in the window to, to attract those types of people in because they're looking for votes. Right now, they're putting illegals in the window to attract those people to come in that party, right? Yes, we need to have people who happen to be black, happen to be white. Happen to be Hispanic, Asian, run for office. One thing Trump was able to do was actually bring this party happen to be black, happen into a more Hispanic, um, bigger tent because of plus America you know, being the melting pot that it is. It reminded me of that. That race and color skin don't define, don't define who gets into the office or who gets nominated. I, I say that I get it. I don't care whether I'm elected or not. I don't care uh, whether or not you're not going to vote for me next time, but I'm not going to sit here and cower down to the left's agenda. I'm not going to cower down to these rhinos and people who are really not concerned about the GOP uh, principles that have been in place for decades. And so we need those kind of people. Our rhinos are really Those making us uh, saying, you know what, my name is the country. But when I say what I'm getting ready to say, you can even hell hole because with this uh, fight because I'm fighting the stimulus with this uh, and at the end of the day I can go to bed because my conscience is clear. This bill that just passed today was ridiculous. Right. The number of Republicans that uh, voted for it. Republicans in name only totally bailed out Pelosi. Or in our ranks. How can you build a ship and you have the people who are gonna destroy the ship on the same committee? of the committee who build it. How can you fight a war against the enemy? And you have the people who are helping the enemy on the same side as the people who are fighting the enemy. They believe in the destruction. And, and why do they believe in destruction? Because remember, the Republicans in name only are, in many cases, the ones in power, in the seats. How, how does a Republican in name only stay in power? By keeping out other Republicans. That's right. It builds your club. I used to get the news filtered by my parents, but my parents were Democrats. I thought President Obama, by all appearances, is a great husband, a great father, and that family structure that the black community needs to see. Too many fathers are also missing. Too many fathers are MIA. Wow, family structure, the importance of education. Look at this, it's amazing. The first Black family, it was like the hospitals, right? So the coffee shop. I was like, this is awesome. Uh, but he gets in office, and then all of a sudden, he completely changes his tune, right? He starts going out and, and talking about, remember the whole the death of Trayvon Martin, uh, that whole case. Uh, Trayvon Martin could have been me uh, 35 years ago. He talked about racism all the time, talked about being oppressed, talked about how America is so bad for the black man and for black families. And I'm thinking, Here's a guy that was just elected as the first black president in this country. By the way, I switched over to the Republican Party. I ended up joining the Baltimore County Republican Central Committee, uh, and I've been a Republican ever since. I left the Democratic Party in 2019 when I ran for Congress uh, for District 27. I changed to the Republican Party in 2018. I remained remain a non-party affiliate after I changed from Democrat 
before I went to Republica because I need to be in purgatory for a while after I've been there for so many years at the Democratic Party. I have to clean up my heart and clean up my spirit and then go back. Yeah, I was uh, once a Democrat. Um, I always say, typically, if you're black and conservative, there's a story behind it because most black folks are raised as a Democrat. I did a 30 minute interview with Real Keisha, and it may have been actually about maybe an hour interview. Me. Was I felt that's and the, her testimony is really powerful. So if you want to check it out to the channel and uh, search for Keisha King. for me was um, life transforming. It changed three, two months my ago, life. three months ago. I literally felt the shackles of limitations, the shackles of a broken mindset fall away. Once I saw my true identity in Christ and not through my skin color, it was um, it was transforming. We had a meeting where. Uh, where a lot of new people, everyone went around the room and introduced themselves. And the stories that people told of their background, who grew up some right here in Atlanta, that were told the police was their enemy, white people are evil. And then they went out in the world and they discovered the truth for themselves. It's like living in a neighborhood when everybody on the neighborhood tell you, don't talk to the girl that just won't be. She's bad. She will take your husband away. But you have never talked to that girl. But you go by whatever everybody said. Only one day you walk in the dark and you find out she's nice. But the others are going to be against you because you're talking to that person. When we told you she was bad. Why stay loyal to something or someone that's not loyal to you? It was really heartbreaking. My mom is a Democrat. And it breaks my heart to see my own family. They walked away from me. It was still hard for me as a former Democrat to put that R in front of my name. It was just so difficult. Now, I've noticed that to be the case for so many black people. They just, they, 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 they just can't bring themselves to saying Republican. I'm a Republican. The notion that we have to treat white people as if they're somehow the bad people and they're keeping blacks from progressing is defeated when you look at many black people who have made it. We have to put off the stereotypes, put aside the anger and the hurt. We've got to reach for that American dream because our constitution says we can have it, and by God, we can. Through technology, through change laws, through activism, through information and truth, Black America has Again, she's every the, uh, opportunity one of the producers of this film, she wrote the book, The There's Black American in this country. At this point in time, Black American History Bible, I believe it's called. Stop me from doing it. I want to specifically say to my African American family, we matter, we count, we are part of God's entire creation. I do believe that the people of color are a persevering, relentless culture. We have to have enough enough courage to get out there and say, it doesn't matter whether your hair is gray and you're white and you want to go out and say, I don't think I can do it. We can do it. We can get together. Look at Martin Luther King who marched down the street only hand in hand with all kinds of racist denominations. Now CRT says the exact opposite of what MLK and civil rights movement say. The exact opposite. You know, in my own case, how is it you can have a uh, lawyer who has practiced law 42 years, longer than anyone who's ever run the Republican Party as a trained job in 400 years. We've come from not being officers in the military to having officers in the military. We've come from not having elected official, officials to having people like Senator Tim Scott. We've come a long way. We always survived. We were always a close knit family. And there is so much hope in loving and being involved and being included with dignity, kindness, and stability. We're Americans. God is doing an amazing thing with this nation, and there are more people like me that are starting to open their eyes and wake up. And by the grace of God, I'm seeing a lot more black conservatives on Facebook, Instagram. I don't have TikTok on my phone, but I have friends that do. So TikTok is totally blown up with black conservatives. Great. God gives you a spirit of courage and boldness. We are some of the best and brightest among our nation and our communities. So we come together as brothers and sisters, not divided by skin color, embracing each other and everyone with love.
historically the black community has always been a strong group. We survived slavery, we survived Jim Crow, we actually survived the depression better than white people did. But we always survived. We were always a close knit family. We'll survive. We, we understand how to survive and we'll make our own way. I think black people are some of the most powerful people in this country. We have, for example, Booker T. Washington, Tuskegee, Alabama, with the Tuskegee Institute. You have right here in Atlanta, Clark, Morehouse, Spelman. You have down in Florida, the Film Cook, up in Virginia, Hampton Institute, that produce lawyers, doctors, farmers, scientists. North Carolina, you have North Carolina was a uh, land grant institution as well. You had the Blue Racial Black News. Howard University was founded by abolitionists. All these things that black people were able to accomplish and achieve under far more severe circumstances. Black measure up to the whites in 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 economics, you measure up to whites in the political arena, you measure up to whites in the military. I don't see this time as a time of despair and depression, rejection. I don't see what is happening right now as an obstacle. I see opportunities. I see opportunities for us the people who are successful, like Colonel the West, they don't see negatives. They see positives. We make it better and we'll take advantage of opportunities for them. That's why we need people who are the OG, the, uh, the original, the Alexi uh, people, like Colonel West and C.L. Bryant and Peter King, to help lead the young people along the way to show them that we are. I will not apologize for doing what's right. Be put aside without a fight. Be sat down, be tossed around, or be shut down. I only need to search my heart, praise the Lord, and preach his word because I am an American. Oh, say can you see? Well, that's the, uh, that's the movie. And I have some notes that I'm going to go. I'm going to let her sing this. Uh, What's so let the light for you. At the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the barren smile or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Turn the volume down and uh, finish this up. I'll wrap this thing up with uh, some comments. And uh, we're heading out of here by the end, by the beginning of uh, UFC 268. So, one second. All right, if you're still around, that was Systematic Deception, and it's a powerful film. And, you know, I've been involved in this project pretty close to it for the, for the past month. And it's interesting, I'm so close to the project that I didn't get a chance to really see the movie that many times, really. But, yeah, thanks, Charles. I appreciate that. And, uh, and so, you know, I just have some notes here because I was thinking that they were going to do commercials and I'd get a chance to break, but I'm not be able to do that. So, you know, you know, there's a lot of key points in here. And I think one thing about this particular film, and I've seen a bunch of, of documentaries like this, this particular one hits a lot of different points and different narratives in, in ways I hadn't seen before. One of the key things about this film is it points out the importance of 
spirituality and faith in God for this whole experiment called America to work. You know, I'm thinking a class of biblical constitutionality right now with wall builders. We meet once a week and we're learning about the founding fathers and the ones we don't even know about. But the key thing for these gentlemen who put forth the Declaration of Independence and also the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the Federalist Papers, these people were thinking ahead, but they knew that we had to have a spiritual fabric. Otherwise, this would not work. And quote after quote after quote, Thomas Jefferson even, and how the left wants to make these people look like they're atheists or the deists. No, they were pretty much all evangelical Christians. Now, Benjamin Franklin was probably the exception, but even he understood the importance of Republic being founded in solid spiritual teaching and morals. Otherwise, it can't work. That's one thing about this film that I really thought was impressive. And it ties into abortion in particular, how it's actually causing our, let me get rid of this here, let me go full screen. How is, let me do this. Give me a second. Let me give you this. All right, there we go. How, how the, um, how abortion has really decimated our community. In fact, you know, they said 25 million people have been killed. But again, if you look at the rate of what could have happened in terms of like, kids growing up to be childbearing age and having kids based on statistics, it's ex it's exponential in terms of the population growth. And it's something that Planned Parenthood particularly set out to do. The project was called the Negro Project. Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist. She wanted to exterminate the weeds. Black people are the weeds. And it all comes from this humanist, communist worldview that says there's no God. And until we identify that big lie of athe atheism, whether it be through macroevolution, whether it be through the Enlightenment period where we don't need God, the same thing that happened with the French Revolution, kick God out of all these areas, you have chaos. So that was really good. And another thing I think about this film that was really good was that the importance of being engaged in politics how we need to be engaged in politics. And not only is it important to be engaged, it's actually our duty. Because looking at the, uh, the people that they reference in, the, in this book, like Joseph and, and other figures in the Bible, we're highly engaged in politics because that ties into the laws, it ties into the very fabric of society. You can't get thing, anything changed without being involved in politics. And I think we have bought into so much of these lies that I think that that we just are, we've been shunned into doing anything. We've been scared to do anything. The Johnson Amendment or that Johnson Clause, which banned churches from speaking in the pulpit, which President Trump actually removed, now churches are, are essentially free to say what they want to say, but they're still so scared because it's so brainwashed. Another point here, he mentioned about uh, Biden and how he is such a, a, a the antithesis of what Trump is, that that Biden is pretty much a race hustling, uh, well, he's not so much a race hustling pimp, but he's been stalled by the race hustlers. And he's just a puppet to do the things that the radical left want to do. And Biden comes from the pedigree of the race of Democrats of the South. And I'll talk about it really quickly here. I can go on on this, but, you know, again, one of the first things I did on, on my channel, on this YouTube channel, uh, The Conservative Take, was to identify why the parties didn't switch, okay? That's a key point because whenever you deal with a Democrat or a leftist, whatever, they're always gonna say, well, the party switched. Uh, no, they didn't. And they're gonna come up with examples. They're gonna say, you know, uh, you know, in, you know in, in 68 or whatever that happened, how the parties just went to, well, actually 63 really, the election with Kennedy well, it goes back to two key areas in American history, really maybe three, but two key areas. The first one was basically the New Deal, okay? It was FDR, who was basically, unfortunately for our country, was a, <laughs> he was pretty much a communist. I mean, he was definitely not good for this country. He believed in socialism, okay? And he just was all about that. 
he increased government so much when the depression came in, the Great Depression came in. He increased government so much, and it just put our country worse. And it wasn't until World War II, which actually got us out of, out of the depression. It wasn't his deal. It was his new deal. It was not that. It was World War II and putting the might of the U.S. industrial mechanism, getting women out and helping on the home front and getting that thing to go to a point where it could not be stopped, okay? And that was, by and large, women did that for this country while the men were overseas fighting. And so, but the New Deal was a big deal for blacks because it incentivized voting for Democrats. Again, the Democrat party was the party of slavery. They were the party of Jim Crow. They were the party of poll taxes. They were the party of segregation. They were the party of all of that. They were the party that wanted to strike down the 13th Amendment, 14th Amendment, and the 15th Amendment. They were the party that basically killed Abraham Lincoln, which destroyed Reconstruction. Angie Johnson comes in, Democrat. He didn't want to do anything. He gets impeached because Republicans are like, look, dude, do something, all right? President Grant comes in, who everyone says, oh, he was a bad president. Well, he really wasn't. He did a lot of things for civil rights. He sent the guard down to the South to help put down the revolts or the, um, the incursion of the Ku Klux Klan. That was Grant did that, Republican. And so it was Republicans from the very beginning. And our history has been lied to us so, so much that we are hesitant to even uh, to, uh, to combat that. And so essentially, FDR basically gave blacks a Florida in deal. He said, basically, get in bed with the Klan and feed your family or starve and stay with the Republicans. And there was a movement by a lot of um, Uncle Tom blacks, uh, I believe the guy who's from the uh, Pittsburgh Courier, I believe, his, I forget his name at the time, he said it's time to push Lincoln's picture to the door or to the uh, to the wall. In other words, it's time to leave the Republican Party and go to the Democrats. This widely known publisher, black publisher, publisher, newspaper guy. Check out the video I have on um, on all this. Go to my uh, YouTube channel, the Conservative Take, right here on YouTube, and check out the playlist. Why the parties didn't switch. Check out those videos there. I have three of them and four of them for various reasons out there but but that was the first one right that was the fdr and the deal and from that point on in time where republicans were going by and large with the i'm sorry where blacks were going by and large with republicans it switched when truman came in office almost like 55 percent in one election cycle and they totally flipped and went for the democrats second time is we dealing with uh election of 1963. you have uh mlk who gets in, imprisoned and he, I forget where he was exactly, but Credit Scott, Credit Scott King, his wife, was pregnant at the time. She was distraught. She reached out to Nixon campaign to, to do something. Uh, Nixon wasn't around at the time to do anything. JFK was coerced by his uh, campaign to give her a call and to reach out to Credit Scott King because this was a, a tenuous situation. Uh, Nixon, there was a Republican, there was the first person they were going to go to. In fact, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., sorry, Martin Luther King Sr. was a stout Republican. He put out full page ads for Goldberg, for, I'm sorry, for Goldwater. I'm sorry. Anyway, so they went to them first, but it didn't work out. And then JFK swept in, called um, Crow Scott King, and he worked out a deal, literally. He worked out a deal with the governor of, I think it was. I'm not sure what state it was. I may be saying it wrong, but you worked out a deal that if you release King, um, just don't put me in it, okay? Just release him, and then they made a deal, and then they released King. And so King was credited, his release was credited with JFK's campaign. At that point in time, uh, Martin Luther King Sr. had what he called the blue bomb. It was a, he had all the churches, in the area, in the South, pretty much. He was a pastor himself, one of the most powerful churches in the South, Ebenezer, in Atlanta. He released what he called the Blue Bomb, which was basically putting the uh, the word out to vote for JFK. And JFK won the election by a very slim margin. And from that point on, that was locked in stone. And that's where it came from. But at the same time, JFK was not, you know, he was really, you know, the most staunch, um, you know, I don't want to say he's a racist, but he was just a, a dude who was just trying to do whatever. But when he was killed, LBJ, he he nailed it then. He decided to 
go with a policy called the war on poverty instead of going with a project which was put forth to him to actually increase the family structure in the home. It was a whole um, uh, process put in place or a procedure or a program to strengthen black fathers in the home. It was called the Negro Family Project, or I can't remember what it is. I did a video on this as well. I'm going from memory here. But that was jettisoned, and then you had LBJ, and we know the rest from there. The war on poverty did nothing but destroy the black community. And prior to that, FDR, his redlining, also instituted racial segregation in terms of real estate. And then, of course, you had Biden with his crime bill of 94. So all that together, the parties absolutely did not switch. The situation where you have an agrarian switch from the antebellum period at the South of physical slavery to now a political or a power-based ghetto urban plantation where the power is in the votes of the people and that's what's keeping the oligarchs and the bureaucrats in power and i will include also the rhinos who actually give the assist to the democrats which last point i want to make is this video did a good job of pointing out the rhinos and how they are detriment and they have to go so that's it i am going to end this right here i'm going to watch UFC 268, and if you don't know that, but uh, UFC, um, they said they're not going to make anyone mandated to take the jab. So I've been on board with UFC for a while because there's nothing much, much, nothing much more to watch in sports now. Everything's gone woke. So I don't see any comments out here. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and supporting this particular project. And I'm sure there's going to be screenings around the country. You can go to Systematic – system. I'm sorry. I keep saying Systematic – yeah, that's right. Systematicdeceptionmovie.com and check out your tickets there. You can watch it uh, again with a donation. If you go to that site there, it's really cheap. I think $5 they're asking for, for viewing. So with that, everybody, I want to thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. And let me find my cue here. And if you guys want to you know, support this channel, you can go to uh, the Republic, sorry, the conservative take.com. And there we have a, a section there called The Gate. It's a free membership site. If you go there, it's on the screen right here. Let me get rid of this here so you can get rid of that. That website there, it's a free sign up. We have videos out there that YouTube won't allow us to put. It's a free sign up. At some point in time, there will be a pay paywall behind this. But for now, it's totally free. And from there, I can uh, check you out there. Check out Telegram. At, uh, on Telegram, we're at... Uh, TCT underscore USA and Instagram, we're there as well at TCT underscore USA. So with that, thank you everyone again, and I will see everyone in the next video.